Hello friends, my name's Royal Emil and welcome back to some more Gran Turismo 3 Ace Spec. Today we're continuing on with our Let's Play. This is episode 3 and in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at the first of the international licenses. This time it's the IB license uh, where stuff gets a little bit more interesting. Um, for example, on this first license test we'll actually be driving in the wet. Yeah, wet weather was a thing in uh, the Gran, in Gran Turismo 3. Um, there is a special stage, uh, special version of special stage Route 5, a lot of special there, um, that is in the wet, and uh, we will be driving around that, I actually can't wait for that event, uh, that should be a lot of fun to do, uh, I do quite like uh, weather conditions in, uh, in racing games, it always makes things a little bit more interesting, of course GT3 uh, was the first of Gran Turismo games uh, to do that, to my knowledge anyway, I think Gran Turismo 1 featured some rain in its introduction, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, anyways, you can see wet weather driving is a bit more difficult. The fact that they've given us a Corvette to do this in is even more questionable. Uh, of course, the Corvette is a slidey car. Um, you know, both in GT... In all the Gran Turismo games, uh, the Cor in Forza... Um, I'm, I'm going... Yeah, anyways, in Forza, the Viper GTS and the Corvettes are usually pretty decent to drive. In Gran Turismo, they slide all the time everywhere. Uh, so giving us a Corvette for this is very, very, um, it's not good. Um, as you can see, I'm actually launching in second gear there. That actually does work in uh, Gran Turismo games. That actually does help to get the cars off the line a bit quicker. Uh, you may see me using that tactic uh, with the later cars, you know, the muscle cars and the race cars. Um, that is usually the better bet to get them off the line, because if you don't use traction control, they will just spin and spin and spin on the start line. Um, so starting in second gear is actually a pretty valid tactic, um, although you wouldn't normally want to do that, um, it does work in this game, uh, which is good. Anyways, in case you're curious, this is a slightly uh, bigger oval uh, than the previous one. We're still just driving in a circle in the wet. Uh, yeah, you've got to be really careful on this test. If you smash the accelerator in the wrong way, the car will just spin off the track. Uh, it did take me a couple of attempts at this one, I believe. Ironically, it took me uh, less attempts at this longer circle than it did at the shorter one, though. Uh, just because the short one's a bit of a tighter radius, it's actually slightly harder, believe it or not. So, yeah. Anyways, um, as we move into off the wet and into Seattle now uh, with some more Seattle circuit. Uh, Seattle circuit, again, one I'm not a huge fan of. I don't mind the Seattle circuit. Uh, too much. I'm just not a fan of city circuits in general. Uh, they're not really my sort of thing. Not the tracks that I like to race around. I like to race around, you know, your more open tracks. Um, that's just more my sort of thing. But there is a lot of love for the Seattle track. Uh, it will pop up quite a bit. I'm not actually sure on how many tracks there are in this game. Um, but, you know, as I've said before, there's decent variety. And of course, the Gran Turismo original tracks are some of the best in gaming. They, you know, Autumn Ring, uh, stuff like that is a really well-regarded circuit. Yeah, some of these may as well be real-world circuits. Um, this is sort of before Gran Turismo did the whole GT4 thing where they added a lot more real-world tracks. I'm appreciative of Gran Turismo 4 for that. It made, you know, it makes races a little bit more interesting, granted, but we did lose uh, some of those originals. Ironically, one original track that is missing from Gran Turismo 3 is High Speed Ring. Not sure why uh, it's missing from this game, but it is. Um, ironically, Polyphony actually said, or Polyphony, I'm not sure. Um, Polyphony, Polyphony, I'm not sure which one I'm going to go for. I'll probably switch between the two. Um, ironically, they actually came out and said uh, that during the events of Gran Turismo 3, um, High Speed Ring actually experienced an earthquake, uh, which is why it's not in the game, and that's why there's a uh, bridge on it. On GT4 uh, because it's a bit redesigned so that's something a little bit interesting actually I really like the fact that they came out and said that although personally for me I don't know I I signed on the fact that maybe it was a coding error of some description because not having high speed ring in the game is really weird uh, considering how popular that track is and how much it featured in uh, previous games as you can see here complex string uh, this license test actually does force on uh, traction control uh, and ASM, so yeah, basically the whole point of these two tests, kind of like the Corvette and the wet thing, 
Uh, you're supposed to experience the slalom with traction control and all the rest of it on, and then you experience it without it uh, in the next test. It's a pretty fun test, actually. Again, I do like the complex string. It is a tricky track, um, you know, not going to lie. But it's certainly a fun one. Uh, it's got quite a flow to it, which is nice. You sort of look at the map and it looks like they've just tried to basically throw a bunch of complex sections in. Uh, but it's actually a really fun track um, when you get into the nitty gritty of it. So that's good. Um, yeah, uh, one of the tracks I do like from GT3 unfortunately never appeared in any other Gran Turismo game other than Gran Turismo 3. Although it was supposed to be in Gran Turismo PSP. Uh, but... If you try and play it on a Gran Turismo PSP, it's just missing a bunch of textures, so... Yeah, a bit of a shame, really. Although I can kind of understand why this track sort of died off. I believe it was probably replaced by the driving park. Uh, you know, Motorland and the Beginner's Course and so on. Uh, that's sort of what Gran Turismo 4 used as its sort of learning courses. Anyways, uh, final test here is at Apricot Hill. Uh, just dealing with the first couple of corners of Apricot Hill, which can always be a little bit tricky. Um, if we remember back to Gran Turismo 2, uh, when I did the endurance race around here, uh, the AI was definitely having some issues uh, with this track constantly spinning off it and so on. So, yeah, luckily I don't do that in this license test. This one did take a couple of tries. Uh, the time limit on this one, as you can see, is uh, pretty strict, and as you can see uh, at the top, yeah, my best time. That, that was an infuriating one. Uh, but oh well, this stuff like that does happen. I remember on uh, Gran Turismo 4, I lost the license test by, by uh, a thousandth of a second. Uh, that was nice when that happened. Anyways, as you can see, International B license test has been acquired. It now has a slow motion slop to the floor. Oh, it doesn't even slop to the floor. You sort of do a spinny thing with it. Ooh, new animations. Anyways, uh, that is it for the IB licenses. As always, we'll go have a quick look at my home just to see the game status, to see how far we are coming along in the game. And that's going to be it from me, friends, for this episode of A Gran Turismo Free. Thank you all very much for watching. In the next episode, we'll take a look at the International A license. Thanks for watching. Um, my name has been The Real Emil, and until next time, farewell.